Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are in hot water once again and the people surrounding them would simply like them to shut up. But what about this time? Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, listen, thank you so much, by the way, for all the wonderful messages about the brilliant Engelbert Humperdinck. I really appreciate that. And yes, Sir Richard Attenborough. What a man. Yeah. I mean, I, do you know, one of the things I wanted to say as well, which I'd forgotten to mention in the video was uh, he did his impression of John Christie, you know, from the movie Ten Rillington Place. For my mind, far more terrifying that particular performance than years later with Silence of the Lambs. And I didn't really realize this but I'm sure some people out there will remember uh, from their grandparents and stuff that particular hat that the character wore the John Christie hat became something of a sort of cult if you like a fashion item and then a lot of people decided to bin the hat because everybody said oh you've got a Christie hat of course it's not great is it when you're an international murderer and you're wearing a bit of a fashion item as ever nothing changes it's just the decades that move on but Richard Attenborough truly was a wonderful man uh, absolutely brilliant I will share some more memories of him of course when I get the time to watch some of the video back and I know a lot of people say to me oh well, we should put the video up I wish I could too but you know a lot of that stuff um, is not here with me in London it's elsewhere and the bottom line is we have masses and masses and masses of interviews with very famous people uh, you know everything from presidents to royalty uh, right through to international stars and even some reality stars mm. Yes, the things you were forced to do. <laughs> Back as ever though to your breaking royal story of the day. This story really centers on the fact that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, as we now know, are celebrities. They're not royals. They decided they didn't want that. And so moving forward, they've decided that, you know, this is how they're going to make their money. With these mega, mega big deals with Spotify, Netflix, that sort of stuff. Nothing wrong with that, perfectly acceptable, but then you have a problem. So the bigger problem now for Harry and Meghan is simply this, you know, as I've said, they have to make their money through being micro celebrities. And it's not easy, as they found out recently, hosting their Invictus Games out in The Hague. You know, it's a lot of demands and you really do have to connect with the media, something that they basically said they didn't wish to do, as you can imagine. You know, they picked and chose the magazines, the newspapers that they wished to speak to. And of course, you know, once you decide to turn on the media, then they decide to pick holes in every single thing that you do. And if you recall, of course, Prince Harry said about the Invictus Games, it wasn't about him at all. It was about these wonderful people, which are truly are wonderful people. But what I found interesting was he also said we we're going to have an amazing guest lineup. And uh, unless they've hidden some of that for the documentary, I couldn't quite see exactly that it would say have the same impact as Live Aid or something like that. I wasn't quite sure exactly what they were trying to do. How would, uh, say, the Kaiser Cheese be known uh, so much across Europe? Have they sold that many records? I think they're really pleasant. I've met the main singer, Ricky, and the band. They're very nice guys. But, you know, international stars? I was thinking, say, somebody like Bruce Springsteen. Somebody of that nature, you know, truly a global icon. But now, as I say, the problem for Harry and Meghan is simply this. Those deals come with a price, and that price is their books. And what they're basically worried about, and this is what happens when you get multiple deals. You've got Spotify, you've got Netflix, you've got Penguin Random House. Then you've got things like Better Up and everything else that he's associated with. You know, I can't remember all those weird jobs that he has, like Chief Impact Officer, all that sort of stuff. They're all paying you big bucks but they also want the world stage. You have to mention them. You have to get them in. Now, the problem with Harry right now is that he's speaking too much. And if you recall, he started to talk about his late mother, Princess Diana, how she was looking out for him and now basically guiding him in his future. All very nice, all very noble and really moving, in fact. But the bigger problem for Harry is simply this. That's the sort of thing that they want kept in a book. That's the thing they need to sell the book. And according to a very good source out at Penguin Random House in New York, they want him to shut up, you know? This could be the sort of thing that could get a few sales on a sit-down interview when promotion starts for his memoir. And as you can see from both sides, Harry really is torn because he has to speak about these particular things in order to grab the headlines for the ventures that he's trying to do. But equally, the paymasters that are giving you millions expect you to shut up and make sure that you can sell your book with stories very similar. Now, if Harry's got other similar stories, that's great. But right now, by mentioning things like his late mother and his family, the public lose interest. And more than ever, Penguin Random House need a return on that book. It's a hard lesson in the world of celebrity, and one you would have thought that Meghan Markle herself 
having a little success as an actress may have been able to guide Prince Harry through, but as ever, seemingly not, and as ever, allegedly. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.